Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and talk to you uh, about a scripture that I have quoted many times and I believe with all my heart. It's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 and it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. And I want to talk to you today about the reality that nobody will ever be boasting at the Bema Seat of Christ because every one of us came to the Lord, every one of us have grown up in the Lord, and every one of us will be completed in the Lord by the grace of God, not by your work, not by your effort. And this is important uh, to understand. Everything going on in us is not our own work. It is a work of the Holy Spirit. And what it really comes down to is our willingness to be yielded to the work of God, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And this is an issue that we have run into. Um, many people who do not want to yield their will to anyone, including Jesus, they want to believe that they are their own gods, that they are in control. And the reality is none of us are our own gods or masters. We are either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. It's one or the other. And I'm going to go over the scriptures that talk about that. But I want to start off with the very basics about how we literally come to, into a relationship with Jesus and how this is something that without the intervention of God himself, we couldn't even do. All right. I'm going to go over the scriptures that talk about that. All right. Hebrews 6, chapter 1. I've talked about this many other times, but this is really important for all of us to understand. We are told in Hebrews 6, 1, Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death, which would be sin, which the wages of sin or death, and of faith in God. Again, Hebrews 6, 1. Now, if I shared before, um, the word that's used for repentance there means literally reformation. And it is used in the noun form, meaning this is a place of reformation. Now, I think we could all agree that a foundation is the most critical part of any structure. And without a foundation, we can't build anything that would last. So for us as believers in Christ, it's critical that we understand the foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ. And Hebrews 6.1 tells us that that foundation is repentance. As an, and as I just said, that word means reformation. And that also means transformation. That's synonymous with transformation. So basically, when a person comes into a relationship with Jesus, they, they first enter a place called repentance, where a work of reformation, transformation, this is known as the sanctification process begins. And this is a work of the Holy Spirit. All right. Holy Spirit is the one doing this work. But the Bible tells us we can't even come to Jesus unless the Holy Spirit draws us, the Spirit of God draws us. Jesus said in John 6, 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. Now, this is really, really important because not only does it speak to the reality that Holy Spirit is doing a divine work by drawing us to Jesus, um, by giving us some type of grief for our sin and understanding that we need to turn away from sin, um, but it also speaks to the reality that we ourselves cannot draw anyone to Jesus. We can plant seeds, and we should be doing that, and we can water those seeds, but it is only a divine work of the Holy Spirit that can lead someone to Jesus. This is why it's so important that we are in prayer, all right, for loved ones, uh, family members, friends, coworkers, whoever we're praying for that is lost, we need to be praying for them, all right, to, to be brought to Jesus, to be drawn to Jesus, okay? All right, so now the work of Holy Spirit that draws us to the Lord leads us to a place first where we enter repentance. We enter that place called repentance. Like I said, it was used in the noun form, meaning a place, not an action. And 
So we then we come to a place where uh, we recognize what Jesus has done for us and we recognize who he is. And by faith, we respond to that, okay? Um, I've gone over this many times, Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And again, the word Lord, meaning master, someone who has deciding power in your life. And the word confess, meaning to agree. So you agree to make Jesus Christ your master, your Lord. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Okay, you understand that he shed his blood to, to pay for your sins and, and you believe that, then you will be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth you confess and are saved. So the moment you come into that place of surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit births you into the kingdom of God. This is that born again experience, all right, where your spirit man comes to life. And this is not something that you do. It's not something I do. It's something Holy Spirit does. And as we are born of Holy Spirit, suddenly this is when things begin to change in us. Things that you, you have no control over. You just wake up one morning and you realize you see things from a different light. Your values change. Your belief system changes. And this is because Holy Spirit is opening your spiritual eyes so that you can see things you never saw before. And he is aligning you uh, with the will and the plan of Father God. So important to understand, Holy Spirit is doing this work of reformation in you, not you yourself. All right. Now, understanding the truth, God is love. So John tells us in 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And John 17, 3 tells us, Jesus in speaking to the Father said this, now this is eternal life, that they know you. And the word know there is G1097, and it's a Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. Uh, that they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So literally coming into that relationship with Father God through the Lord Jesus Christ that is eternal life. And I know some people have different thoughts on what eternal life is. If you ask them, they might say, well, going to heaven or uh, receiving gifts, receiving uh, some type of reward. But Jesus defines eternal life as being in relationship. I mean, a very close, intimate relationship with Father God and Him. And it is through that relationship that we come into love, all right? Love comes into us, and this is how then God expresses love through us to others. And, and John tells us that that is how, that's the evidence that we know God. Because whoever does not love does not know God, all right? So if you are expressing true love, this is evidence that you know God. And you can't do that without him because it's his life in you doing it. All right, now, the fruit in our lives. It's the same principle uh, that fruit, good fruit, is produced in our lives. We are born with a sin nature, okay, the seed of Adam. Now, we, we, it's not our fault that we received that. We just received that. But we are responsible for any kind of sin that we um, yield to in our lives, that we allow in our lives. Now, the same principle is true for the born-again believer who receives the seed of God, 1 John 3, 9. And this, the fruit, the good fruit, begins to be produced in us. And John tells us uh, that that seed is only capable of producing good fruit. So we can't take credit for the good fruit that's produced. Uh, all we're doing, just like with the seed of uh, Adam, is yielding ourselves to that seed um, and allowing God to manifest the good fruit in us. And Jesus affirms that he is the one doing the work and not us. When he, In John 15, 5, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing. This means Jesus does it all. 
And this is why at the Bema Seat in Revelation, when people, the righteous are receiving their crowns, um, and the Bible talks about them throwing their crowns at the feet of Jesus. And they're doing that because they recognize this truth. They know that it was Jesus in them who did the work, who produced the good fruit. All right. And that it is Jesus who deserves all the glory, all the credit, not us. Okay. Like Paul said, so that no one can boast. No one. It's all Jesus. He does it all. But it's also important for us to remember uh, that all that we become, all that we accomplish as born-again believers is directly proportionate to our degree of yieldedness to the work of Holy Spirit in us. I'm going to read that again. All that we become, all that we accomplish as born-again believers, is directly proportionate to our degree of yieldedness to the work of Holy Spirit in us. Now, why is that important? It's important because it speaks of our free will. When we are born again, all right, we are born uh, again with our free will intact. And we know this is true because Jesus said in John 15, 6, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. All right, so, but that shouldn't frighten anyone. If you have a heart to stay in Christ, to stay with the Lord, no matter how weak you are, um, Jesus will be faithful to you. You do not need to fear losing your salvation if it is your heart to stay in him because your will is sovereign. And Romans 8, 38 through 39 attests to this when it says, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there is nothing if your will is to stay in Christ even if you keep messing up, you know, you confess your sin. First John 1, 9, if you confess uh, your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. If you're confessing, even if you mess up a hundred times a day and you're confessing your sins, Jesus is going to restore you. Jesus, you're not going to lose your salvation. I would tell a person who thinks they lost their salvation, you can't lose your salvation. A person will forfeit their salvation, but that's a choice of theirs to walk away from Jesus. As Jesus said, if you do not remain in me, which tells us we can choose not to remain in him and walk away. But your will is sovereign. And, and Romans 8, 39, 38 through 39 speaks to that truth and tells us that if you want to remain with the Lord, nothing in all creation can separate you from him. But the same is true on the opposite side of the coin. If you want to walk away from him, God himself is not going to stop you. He's not going to violate your free will because he gave it to you. Just like he gave everything he created, his angels, all of his creation, with a free will. All right? So just keep that in mind if you are truly wanting to stay in the Lord and, and rest, rest assured that he is keeping you, uh, that you are not losing anything um, the enemy cannot take you away from Jesus. Nothing can, all right? So just be at peace in your relationship with the Lord daily. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to talk about is righteousness and sin. All right, they are both uh, actions, but they are used in the noun form in Romans chapter 6 uh, several times by Paul. Romans 6, 16 through 21. And it's important for us to understand this because these, these are places too that a person can remain or enter into. Uh, Paul talks about, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Now, sin and righteousness are both used in the noun form right there. All right. And that's important because <clears throat> this speaks of a place where we are either staying, a place of sin, you know, where Satan is our master and we are yielding ourselves to, to sin or where 
we enter into a relationship with the Lord and we are brought into a right standing, into righteousness uh, through what Jesus did on the cross for us. So it's, it's still our choice, but there is no in-between, all right? Years ago, when I was early in my walk with the Lord, he, he told me this. He said, no man is master of himself, though he may think it's so, he is not. And that's critical to understand um, when you, you have this um, mindset where people think, well, you know, I don't serve Satan, but I don't want to serve God either. Well, if you haven't chosen to walk with Jesus, then by default, you are in the place of sin with your sin nature ruling you. And Satan works through that. You're, you're in that trap. You're, you're his prisoner. Uh, whether you want to serve him or not, you're not serving yourself. That I can tell you, we are not our own gods. We cannot be our own gods, our own masters. Uh, we either serve Satan by default, or we choose uh, to walk with the Lord, to serve him, uh, to, to belong to Jesus, one or the other. All right. All right. So just in summary, the main thing I wanted to get across was that it is critical for us to understand that it is not we ourselves who begin the work of righteousness, of good fruit, of restoration, of transformation um, in our lives. That all begins by the Holy Spirit drawing us a divine work. It is a divine work that is ongoing in us. Uh, if we choose daily to stay in Christ and walk with him, that divine work continues as we continue uh, to grow and mature. Uh, that work will be completed by the Lord Jesus, not by us. It's all him. It's all, it's all a gift that we receive, all right? And our part is to simply yield ourselves, yield ourselves to that work of Holy Spirit. And again, to the degree we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit's work is uh, to the degree that we will grow up and produce the good fruits in our lives. And this is what Paul meant when he said, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. All right, our faith prompts us to respond to the grace of God, all right, that free gift of eternal life and everything he offers us, a new nature uh, and the transforming power of his life in us. Um, and at the end of it all, none of us will be able to boast. Uh, we will all be throwing our crowns at the feet of Jesus because he alone deserves all the glory and all the credit for all the work. I hope this message blesses you. I hope that you will take this to the Lord. And as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.